Hello and welcome back. So yes, as promised, um, today we're going to be doing um, meshes, okay, or terrains, meshes. Um, and we'll, um, I'll go through some of the, the basics and then I'm also going to go through um, how to create a, a really accurate terrain um, using imported contour lines from a GIS. Um, and that could be an online GIS as well. All right, so let's get straight into it. So um, as I kind of briefly showed last week, um, here is our mesh. Um, and by default, it looks rather boring. So let's have a look at some of the settings. So first of all, um, let's go to the 2D view. Um, I'm just gonna go and find a nice little empty part of my drawing over here. And we're gonna go to the mesh tool that's down here. Now we've got four different ways of drawing it. So we can do a polyagonal mesh. Um, that polyagonal mesh, of course, as well, will work within, um, you know, by using the, the magic wand. So if I go to the magic wand, I can make a circular mesh. Okay, that's all based on our uh, magic wand settings, um, which looks like earlier when we played around with these, so normally it's on that, um, which would look like, I'm just gonna move that off to the side, you can see the difference there, it was two meter um, segments, um, whereas by default, oops, it looks like that, okay. There's actually a very big difference with this. So let's just talk about that. Um, oh, no, actually, we'll just leave that for a second. In fact, sorry, I'll just show you the other two methods, um, which are where you just define the corners. Okay, so you just define opposite corners. Um, this one, so if you've got a, a sort of a, a width and height that you know, uh, sorry, width and, um, and length, um, we can put that in. It could be at an angle as well. Okay, so if you want to do that using numbers, we'll see, we can go um, A, A, D, um, D8000, cool, and then we can go D8000, and we've got a nice square one, cool, on an angle. All right, and the last one is this one, where we can basically set up um, a, a, a grid. So if you've actually gone out, now this is one surveying technique, I don't know how many people use this technique, but um, where you actually go through and you just um, figure out the heights um, along a set grid. So let's say it was a two meter grid. Um, the only problem is actually, this doesn't allow you to say a two meter grid. Um, it actually divides it up, so you'd actually have to know how many divisions. So in that case, if this was a two meter grid, um, if I went 10 meters and then divided it into five, I'd have um, a point every two meters. Um, so, so that's how that works. And then we can actually also, though, um, put in some default heights here. So you can actually see we've got Z1, Z2, and Z3. So what that does is that it'll be this bottom corner, this corner, and this corner. And then it basically will, it will um, adjust this to fit. Um, so I'll show you how that looks. So let's say we go 0, and we'll go 2,000, and then we'll go 4,000. Okay. And when we go OK, it's going to set up a grid of points. And if I just um, drop this into the um, 3D view um, using the F4 or F5 on the PC, you can see it's set up um, a mesh um, with all of the heights already defined. Okay, so we've got um, zero, what did I say, two meters and four meters. Okay, so it's um, just defined it and it's a dead flat surface. So that's why if we'd set that fourth height, then we would have a ridge running through the center. Um, so that's quite handy. Um, now normally to um, adjust a mesh, we would just click on these Z heights, uh, sorry, these nodes here and apply a Z height. Okay, so you can see that this is 2500, so if I, I could actually say 3000, okay, and go OK. And if I go back into my 3D view, you'll see that we've adjusted the height of that. We can actually also adjust the height of these points um, visually in the 3D view, so I can actually grab this point here and get my little pet palette and I can set the Z height so I can just like guess it, guess it or I can actually snap to another point so if I wanted to make a flat building platform in here I could just set all of these to the same height as the central one okay, make sure you get the snaps right maybe that one as well cool, so then I'm making a flat platform here there we go Okay, so now I've got a flat platform, and we can um, start building on that. Okay, 
Let's go back to our 2D. Um, I'm just going to delete that. So, this is quite important. See, because notice now, with this one here that we created, um, this has actually got two points on the, on the outside. Now, normally to add points, um, so yes, we did see how we could actually generate them from the from um, using this, what do they call that one? Method regular sloped. Okay, there you go. Um, however, normally what we do is we select the mesh. Now, you'll notice that you can't add extra points to this. You can just move it, and there's no pet palette to add extra, extra points. So what you have to do is you select the mesh, and then go back to the mesh tool. You've heard me talking about this before. Um, so yeah, a lot of things you'll find that... Um, you get different controls if you select it and then go back to the tool that created it. Um, so in this case, I can now add extra points. Okay, so I can add points. I can also create a hole. Okay, so if I go create a hole, there will be a hole in it. Okay, and if we go and have a look at this one just by itself in the 3D view, you'll see we have a mesh with a hole. I'm just going to undo that. We could also, of course, if we go and hover over here, we should get that center point. So if we wanted to make a cone, we can just add a single point just by double clicking. Um, and then I could go into here and I could say, you know, 5,000. Cool. And we go F3. And look at that. Notice this curved shape has actually got ridge lines where there shouldn't be. Okay. So when it curves this, there's actually more points in here than there should be. Okay. Um, so they're kind of hidden. Which is cool in some regards, but it only actually applies to the outside. This doesn't happen on the in the inside. And I'll show you the main see if I go and draw a circle in here. And I select this and I go and add these points. Um, it actually does linear segments, even though it was actually set to um, best match, it should have done a curve, but it didn't. Okay, so it's only the outside that um, can be circular like that. Always these, it's always actually the points, and those little lines in between just simply represent um, the edge of the polygons, if you like. So it's called a user-defined ridge. Um, then you'll see other ones that look like this. See, they've kind of got a, a different color. Those are the ridges that um, are being generated um, just to, to get the form okay so you you didn't draw these the computer created those ridges and they look like that okay and in fact we've actually got a couple of little things here so let's just we're going to here I'm just gonna um, pop this up so let's go 5,000 um, oops I want to go apply to all and it will actually apply it to all of the points along that line that I drew so whenever you do apply to all it's all of the points that you created um, in one go okay and now if I go to the 3D view, oh sorry, I'm going F4, and we'll just fit that to view. Okay, now you can see that this surface is not very smooth. Okay, it is actually a polyagonal model. Okay, and it's made up like all meshes um, out of little triangles. Well, actually not all meshes, sometimes they're quads, but anyway. For the sake of this, these are always going to be little triangles. It's always creating these little triangles. Um, if there's no change in slope, okay, so... Um, for example in here it doesn't show those ridges because there, there is no edge if you like there are a couple of little options in here though so for example we can say user defined a sharp and so that means that this edge will be sharp um, and these ones all become smooth however it's actually just an optical illusion okay what it's actually doing in fact you can see it's kind of messing up a little bit um, is it's kind of like blending the shadows Okay, so instead of there being a harsh change from one surface to the next, um, it kind of fades out. So you can imagine if you just took the shadows and blurred them, that's how the result you'd end up with. Um, is there anything else? Oh yes, um, I should also just point out here, um, we have, um, we can actually create this as a thin surface. Okay, so if you're trying to make like a tent or something like that, you could actually create it with a mesh. Um, it is infinitely thin though. Okay, so it doesn't have any thickness to it. Um, we've also got um, this one here, which is kind of like a, I don't know, like a box, I suppose. Okay, so it still has this edge bit, um, but it goes down to zero, and if we made a hole in it, we'd actually see through it. Um, I don't think I've ever used that one. <laughs> and then this one, again, it appears as if it's solid. So if we go and do cross-sections through it, we'll actually see dirt or something like that. 
All right. I've also got a uh, machine out on the next door neighbours grinding up trees. So, yeah. So that's the basics of actually creating meshes. Um, let's now we actually saw that we did one with the um, a contour essentially. So let's have a look at that. So what we can do if we go and create a mesh. So I'm just going to create um, a lovely little square mesh. Okay, and I'm going to create some contours using a spline. Now there is actually a big difference with using splines and polylines. So a spline are really cool for magic wanding. And I'll show you why. So we can just go select. Um, now notice that some of these are very straight. Some of these have got quite a big um, kink in it, if you like. When I go and magic wand this, I'm going back to the mesh tool. I'm just going to hold down the space bar, make sure you click on it. Um, actually, I've noticed that it doesn't tend to do it now. Yeah, it said it didn't actually work. Um, it used to actually, if you if you magic wand in here, and you could, it will do it, for example, if I go and grab a, a spline. If I can get it to happen. No, I can't get it to work. <laughs> um, but sometimes what will happen, if you go and magic wand these points, okay. Oh, there you go, see it's doing it now. Sorry, that's because I haven't selected it. Select it. Go back to the mesh tool, magic wand, it'll add these points. If you go through and you're doing this, and um, maybe on an older version, if you go and get your you magic wand one, and all of a sudden it does the next one for you automatically, don't think, oh, that was awesome, because what will happen is when you go to set the heights, it will set the heights. If I go and set this to you know, be the five meter contour, it'll run around and make all this the five meter contour, and then it'll go over here and say six meters, it'll make it, all those ones six meters as well. So, yeah, not getting something for nothing. Cool, I'm going to add that one. Cool, so we've got points. Now notice, <coughs> with these default settings, I'm getting quite a big gap here along the straight edges. And in some areas, I'm getting a lot more points, okay? Um, and let's go put, we'll put some contours on here. So let's say that this is the 2 meter contour. Actually, let's change our options, okay? Because especially when I'm putting in contour heights, working in millimeters sucks because you're just constantly doing 2,000 and 3,000 and all this carry on. Um, let's change our units. Um, where is units? Oh, it's actually under project preferences, working units. And I'm going to change from millimeters to meters. And hopefully, I don't forget. Um, actually, I'm going to go with two decimal places, okay? So, so now I can just go in here and go two. Cool. And then this one will be, let's say that's the 4 meter contour, and then this will be the 6 meter contour. And I've just got to guess what this last one is, okay, so I'm going to guess that it's 6.8. Okay, if it was 7, there might be a contour line near it. It's not going to be above um, 7, because I'm not, there'd be a contour. Okay, and maybe, so what is that, it's 2, so let's make this 1 meter contour, eh? We'll say 1.1. Cool. And this one down here is going to be, um, we can read this off. So that was 2, 4, 6. Um, so we'll make that 5. Okay. If I don't set these, okay, I won't set this one. You'll see what I mean. So I've got F4 now. And we've got a mesh, but it's got some little oddities happening. Okay. Which is great because I was hoping that would happen because that way I can actually go through and massage this a little bit. Now, you might think, that's wrong. Look, it's got a dead flat area. Well, actually, it's not necessarily wrong, but we know it's wrong because contours don't really work like that. But in theory, it is totally correct. Okay, so this was our um, four meter contour. So if that's four meters, and that's four meters, and that's four meters, it's going, well, this whole area is four meters and it's dead flat. But we know that, no, this is actually a ridge running up through here. Um, so we might have to put a few extra points in there um, just to force the fact. Okay, so you can actually see that um, this line running along here is usually a giveaway and there's no lines running through here. Okay, so that means it's dead flat. If there's no ridge lines um, connecting these points, we know it's dead flat. Okay, so same thing here. Okay, so it's just made this one great big area dead flat. So we're going to have to massage this a little bit. So... Um, let's do that. So we've got, um, let's work with this one up here, okay, because it's quite obvious. First of all, um, you can see that we've got a bit of gap in here, so let's just add an extra point. So I'm just going to click on there and we'll just add an extra point, okay, and it adds extra points. That 
I don't have to do anything, it will already be 6 metres because it's smart enough to figure that out. Um, now, let's say this point through here, okay, really what I want to do is add some extra points. So this is called a ridge line, um, and so I quite often do this, I'll just go and change the poly mode. So just make, remember, you've got to have your mesh selected, still on the mesh tool, and I'm just going to add some extra points running up in this direction. Okay, cool, I'm going to add new points, and this time, see it's still flat in here, so this is at 6, so I'm going to say that this is, Z is um, 6.1, this is 6.2, this is going to be 6.3, okay, so I'm just kind of forcing it to um, go up, go, ah, oh. Now I've screwed up because it had applied it all on. Do that all the time. 6.1. So we want to turn the apply it all off. Actually, the interesting thing is, is it actually automatically switches um, the apply to all off um, when you go and do the outside edges. Okay, let's just we'll go with that. Okay. And so now if we go to the um, F4, you'll see up there, we've actually smoothed this off and we've actually got a little bit more of a ridge line. Okay. Um, in actual fact, it would probably even go a little bit more extreme than that. And that's kind of a little bit too extreme, doesn't it? But anyway, that's all right. It has served us well. So, um, now yes, I could keep going through and adding extra points. In fact, I could actually just also just like add yeah, a single point like that. Cool, and then go and let's make that 6.2. Cool, and that just forces it to sort of lift up. I can add points in here. Um, it's just a little bit trickier, okay. Cool. And then I can grab that point. If I go and change the Z, I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. Cool. And there. So I can kind of play around with it like that as well. Awesome. But yeah, you can see we kind of need to add a few extra points in there. Um, we can actually get a bit of extra detail, so let's just, um, how should we do this? I'm going to grab all of the um, all of the splines in here, right? So I'm going to do a marquee, and then I'm going to go to the spline tool, and then I'll go Command-A or Control-A on the PC, and that will select all of the um, the contours. Um, do I want to do that? Yeah, and I, I'm just trying to think, I'm just going to do this again. Um, but what I might do actually is I'm going to just draw another mesh right on top of it. Uh, hang on, this one. I'm going to draw another whole mesh just on top of that. Cool, and I'm going to select that and that and that and that. And then when I get to drag this, what I'll do, um, I'm going to go to this mode here. Let's cancel that. I want this, so I'm going to drag this whole thing, and I'm just going to touch the Option key, okay, or the Alt key. Um, and I, if I hold down the Shift key, it'll go dead straight, and I'll just go like that. I'll just delete that one, there we go. Alright, so this time though, okay, so notice I was just going with whatever the um, Magic Wand was set at at the time. This time what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go to the Magic Wand settings. Um, I might always lose, lose that, there we go, magic wand settings. This time though I'm going to change this to linear segments and I'm going to say um, 1 meter, okay. And now when I go sp um, back to the mesh tool and go, you will see we get spacings of 1 meter across here. See that? And this works quite good for this straight area, so notice that we've got way more points along this straight bit along here so we get a really good definition. However, you'll see that we've kind of lost a little bit of definition through this corner. So you do need to sometimes just go through and tweak your magic wand settings. Um, we're going to revisit this as well because um, I'm going to import um, some data that isn't uh, made up of splines, it's made up of basically polylines. Um, and you'll see what happens with polylines, which kind of sucks. Alright, um, I can go through here though and just add a little bit of extra detail, so if I just grab this um, user defined ridge here, I can add an extra point and I can just kind of pop them back in so, so we get a little less deviation, and that way I get kind of the best of both worlds. You need, do need to pick your battles. Um, I could have actually gone through and maybe you know, 
use one of the other settings for the magic wand um, and by all means experiment with these as well all right but yeah every every project's gonna be a little bit different also the scale of it you know if this was a really big terrain using one meter spacings might just produce way too much detail um, and it just ends up grinding your computer to a halt okay um, let's just delete this one I'm kind of prove my point so let's have a look at this one again how do we then um, so we've looked at you know putting in building platforms and things like that which um, I could actually do quite easily especially in between contours because I can just go pop in a height through here um, whoops select the mesh go back to the mesh tool yeah you know, I can actually just like pop a height in here okay, yeah cool and then select that go and change the Z height um, so to three meters oh, actually notice here it's actually picked up the height that's because um, when I created it, it fitted these lines to the mesh. So you'll actually see, if we go to the 3D view now, you'll actually see that it is still exactly the sort of same, except there's actually a square being added in here somewhere. A, a square bunch of points anyway. Um, and we can go through here and change that Z height. So I can change that. Yeah, I'm going to apply to all. And if we go F3 now, we will see we've got a flat platform in there. Okay. Another way of doing it is, let's say we've got um, our building, I'm just going to go undo. Let's say I've got my, my building platform and it's going to be at the 3 metre contour. So, okay, so the, the floor level will be at 3 metres. So, how do I do that? Because, yes, I could go and put a slab in here at 3 metres, but that's going to kind of suck because that means that all of my stories aren't going to work. What would be smarter is that I actually push the mesh down 3 metres. So, what we do is we're going to treat these contour levels which we should do anyway as heights above sea level so that means that we're going to need a new story so i'm going to create a new story um, i'm going to call this sea level okay and it's going to go below and it's going to go uh, just coincidentally um, three meters um, so that means that um, if i go down three meters okay um, in fact i'm going to copy actually, i'll cut this and actually I don't have to do that because of course we can just go into the settings and say no you actually live on sea level all right and that should actually be zero okay um, that means it's going to put a meter of meat if you like underneath our lowest point okay so now we've got this down on sea level when I go and put a slab here at the three meter mark well no, I don't have to put, I'll put it when I put it at the zero mark sorry so I'm just going to put a nice big building platform right in there okay and if we go um, I'm going to draw a mark here around this entire area now the reason I can see my mesh is because ages ago when we were doing this if you've been following through each of the classes um, I had turned on the trace option I'm going to go draw a marquee hit F4 um, so that will um, on the Mac F5 on the PC and that's going to show me everything that's inside the marquee so I don't see everything else okay and because this is now the top surface is at zero on the ground floor um, which is equal to three meters above sea level because um, that's where my mesh is sitting okay so you get the best of both worlds now it means that all of our heights on here are heights above sea level but our house um, the ground floor is at zero all right, now if you notice, um, this mesh is actually buried under the ground. So yes, I could sit here and I could add some points. So probably the most logical way of doing that is just by selecting this um, mesh, which is actually at sea level, and adding extra points. However, you can see that's going to be a little bit of a trick. Um, and I could sit there and play around with the, um, the um, trace options. I might as well show you that. Because we can, can go to it's the settings. Da -da -da -da. Here are the trace option settings. One of these. What I want to do. Oh, here we go. Um, what I want to do is the previous story. Okay, so if I go ground floor and then sea floor, I should be able to see it. It looks like it's going underneath. If I right click on here and just go display order send to back. No, I still can't see it. Um, okay, it's because this fill is um, actually. Um, it's got a white background not a transparent background so I might just actually just turn off um, the cover fill okay 
and then hopefully I can see that mesh. Awesome. Okay, so now I can just like select the mesh, go back to the mesh tool, magic wand that slab. Yep, I'm going to add new points. Okay, and then I could go in here and I could change that to what did we say? Three meters. Three meters. Hit apply to all. Okay, all those little um, ridge lines disappeared because it's dead flat now. And if I go to my um, F4, um, I can see it's dead flat. And if I reset my 3D view, you can see there's my slab. So that's one way of doing it. Another way, so if I just go back to the 2D, um, I can go undo, undo. And this time though, what I'm going to do is a solid element operation. Um, I probably should do an entire session on solid, solid element operations, but oh well, you're getting it for free. So the way that this works, it's um, also known as um, a Boolean. So whenever you're trying to do Boolean operations, that's um, in here, so you can see it's all subtraction, addition, all that sort of carry on. So what we're going to do is this here is going to be our target. Okay, so that's um, what's having the operation done to it. And this slab, so we go up a level, this slab is the operator, okay? It's doing the operation, it's doing the cutting, if you like. And we're going to do a subtraction with upwards extrusion. So that means it's going to cut through this um, mesh and anything that's above it. This next little um, option here says um, is, is to do with the surfaces. So if I said use your own, it will have like an earth um, material, whatever that one that we saw across the edge, will be um, applied to the cuts. Or we can switch it to this in which it will inherit the attributes of this slab and apply that to the cuts. In fact, let's do that so we can see. And I'm going to go F3 again and check it out. Okay, so now we've got our slab cutting into the um, into the mesh and we can actually see that it's got now vertical sides. So I could now put like walls on this quite simply by just going and grabbing um, this and just change this so that it's the outside face. And we go click and we go F3 and check it out. We have a tiny little shed. Okay, might need a little bit of a support underneath there. Pretty cool, eh? In fact, we could go down here. You watch this. If we go down to sea level, and I grab a column, and I'm going to. So it's going to be on the on um, the sea level um, layer uh, story. I mean, and I'm going to link this to floor one, which is pretty cool because that means if I go and click here, and I want to click this so that it is the um, bottom left corner, and I'm going to pop that there. Oops. Make sure you get your snap right. There we go. Oh, that's because it's rotated 90 degrees. Cool. And if I go to my 3D view now, you'll see it's got foundations in there. Whoops, which are going to the wrong <laughs> story. Okay, hang on. I thought I had that set to the. Let's have a look here. So if we go to the settings, the top of this is linked oh, to the ground floor um, yeah sure that should put it directly underneath there we go almost oh that says point 0.1 we want that I think the slab's actually um, point 0.2 thick minus point 0.2 okay there we go yep See, so that's 0.2 thick. Oh, it's actually 0.3 thick. It's actually cutting into it. But because of our priorities anyway, it's fixing it. Um, I usually like to have those numbers correct just for the sake of it. But anyway, oh, and we can't actually see under that side. So it's not going through. Oh, now notice, um, actually, I'll show you even a smarter way of doing this, right? So check this out. If I go and change our column height, uh, this happens sometimes, okay? Um, it's not there, but it's keeps showing for some reason you'll notice that if I go ground floor sea level it disappears I don't know why it's just a redraw error all right so if I go and get this column and we set this to mesh okay and we'll get down to the sea floor here and go um, yep sure oh, actually let's just, just check these settings in here because I think they've got a little bit weird okay so they're going to go to the ground floor they're going to be minus 0.2 okay um, this height is zero, but I can actually make this go underground a little bit. So I could say I could well, just go minus 0.5, and yep, that's all good. Um, I'm going to center these actually. Hit OK. Okay, we've got a gravity set, and now 
Um, I'm not sure why it thinks that this shouldn't be on the ground floor, but that's okay. If we go F3, you should see we've got our columns sitting on the ground. And if we select these columns, I don't again I don't know why that didn't actually. That's going to ground zero. That should have been point two. Cool, and they'll actually sit down there like that. Lovely, isn't it? Cool, so we've got a column tool, got nothing selected. Minus 0.5, sea level. Um, to project zero is minus 0.35, that's because um, of how we've set up the sea level layer. So that's Alright, so um, now that we've seen how we can place things on a mesh, we've seen how we can um, cut that mesh, let's have a little look at um, creating a mesh from actual real data. So I'm just going to, actually I'm just going to select all that and just delete it. I know you might have become quite a, um, attached to it, but oh well, it's gone. So what I've done is I've actually gone to um, the local um hang on, i'm just trying to find i thought i had a web page open for it no maybe i don't yes i do um so yeah so um this is the local council's website and um you know it's got like aerial photos and contours and all that sort of carry on i've exported those um i had to export this as a dwg um, and i can then come into here and import that um into my um, drawing by going external content place external drawing um, so you could go to and set this to DWG but I've got it right here so go open um, it wants to know what the units are I know that there's a meter so if they come out completely wrong um, you might just have to change those units to whatever units you're meant to be using this is actually a font um, I'm just gonna say skip in fact I'm gonna go skip all Alright, and there's my contours. Um, they're a little bit broken up, so I need to fix them. Um, the other thing I need to do, really, is to change this to using um, splines, not polylines. And I'll show you why. Um, if I go in Magic Wand, so let's go and um, fit a um, mesh. Now, I highly recommend that your mesh fits inside of the contour lines. Okay, So if those contour lines run off the edge of your mesh, things will be really awesome. If they don't, you'll end up with um, contours that stop before they get to the edge and you'll end up with the edge kind of dropping down to zero which is really frustrating. So I'm just going to make this just a little bit smaller um, and again I'm just going to turn off that cover fill so I can actually just see straight through this. Now we have outlines, cover fill, okay. Cool, so now I can see straight through it and I can go down to the mesh tool and I'm going to magic wand um, a the one meter contour here, okay? Cool, add new points. And it's going to take quite some time. No, it's not even going to do it. Ah, and you know why that is? I'm just going to go undo, undo. That's because these lines aren't lines. I can't actually change them. So what we need to do is we select this and what I'm going to do is go edit, uh, I think it's a reshape, yeah reshape explode into current view. Now it's going to say do you want to keep the original one? No I don't, that's just the actual, it's kind of like a picture almost. Um, so I go OK and now we should be able to, no, why didn't that work? Let's just try that again, did I have the wrong thing selected? I might have had my mesh selected. <laughs> Um, reshape, explode into current view. Ah, here we go. Um, so I don't want that on. Um, now we've got imported. Um, um, uh, so this is going to um, how it assigns the layers. So I'm going to actually use the <coughs> Im uh, import the embedded layers. And so that means that this ends up on the contours layer because that drawing had um, a few layers of its own. All right, including contours. So I didn't actually have to create it. Otherwise, I think it puts on the drawings or something. Um, layer. Alright, now, is my mesh still there or have I 
Did I, I think I killed my mesh, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. I think I turned it into a. I exploded it. Um, that's alright. This is actually it here. I'm just going to delete that. Oh, and actually, no, what I will do is I'll just magic wand a mesh onto that. Cool. And then I'm just going to go. Mesh. Remember, I'm going to have this tab. No, it's not going to let me find the line. Doesn't matter. Oh! <laughs> now, because I magic wanded it, and it still had the settings from my magic wand, um, it's ended up putting points every two meters. So let's just go and change that. Um, actually, let's just delete that mesh. I'm just going to get a design, magic wand settings. We'll just go and put that back to the default. Um, I'm not going to delete this anyway, because it bugs me. Um, and I'm going to go and grab my mesh tool. Cool, I'm going to just draw this mesh in here like that. Awesome, I'm going to select that mesh. We're going to turn off the cover fill. Okay, going to go back to the mesh tool. I'm going to magic wand this line. Now you watch what happens. So, yep. And we get a whole bunch of points, but it doesn't really make much sense. It's like, notice how all of a sudden we get like a whole bunch of little points all, all next to each other and then a big gap with nothing. Why did that happen? It's actually to do with this polyline. Okay, so here's the polyline, and you can see every time the magic wand hits. Um, a little kink in this polyline. Um, now maybe you're lucky and you got splines, but I didn't. Um, I got um, contour maps that are made up of tiny little line segments, um, and these really suck because you just it doesn't matter what I change the magic wand settings to. Um, what will happen is that you'll find. So if I just go undo, if I go and change that to um, let's see, story uh, sorry magic wand settings. Why can I never? Um, so if we go and change that to linear segments of, this is a 2 meter grid, so let's say um, at 10 meters. And I go magic wand that, so I select that mesh, yeah I've got the mesh, go back to the mesh tool. Cool, add those points, I still get lots and lots and lots of points. So what we need to do is actually magic wand, so I'm just again going to go back to um, my... Um, magic wand settings yet again. I should just use the key. Oh, there is no keyboard shortcut. Okay. And I'm going to magic wand this line. Okay, so now I've got a spline okay, um, on top of there somewhere. There's my spline. Now you might go, well, that didn't really work out. It looks exactly the same. And you're not far off. Um, let's just see what happens though. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select um, the polylines and I'm just going to hide that layer. Okay, that's using the quick layers. So if you haven't got that palette, palettes, quick layers. Okay, and we'll just select this mesh. Okay, now remember my magic wand was set to um, 10 meter lengths. And watch. Cool, add user points and bam. Um, not perfect, but a heck of a lot better. So hang on, it's just I would have thought it actually would have been better than that even. Let's go to our magic wand settings. Ah, oh, that's because this needs to be sorry, ten meters. Um and we go back to here. And look at that. There we go. Okay, so if you're getting way too many points along those polylines. Um, you want to go through magic wand um, the contours with a spline and you will then be able to go through and actually um, change those to um, to be um, yeah, 10 meter lengths. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to end it there because um, I've got other things to do. <laughs> and um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to um, get hold of me um, by leaving a message down the bottom or hit the forums. Till later, see you.